Munoz. I am Senior Requirement Consultant at Visu Solutions. I have been working with Visu Requirement since 2008 and during this time, in several times, I have faced the challenge of some organization by using Word or Excel as a requirement tool. Uh, things that should uh, come handy uh, with a professional requirement tool like traceability, versioning, or uh, just um, following a process are a real challenge when working with Excel or Word. In this webinar, you will uh, briefly see, under my experience, the main benefits that you can take advantage by using Visual Requirement. Before starting the webinar, uh, let me inform about the GoToMeeting interface. As you can see, there is a question panel where you can post your question. Uh, they will be responded at the end of the webinar. Okay. So, um, additionally, uh, we will be recording uh, this webinar and we will be uploading it uh, to the internet after, uh, after the webinar. Uh, so, uh, let's start now. Uh, this is the agenda for today's webinar. Uh, first of all, we are going to divide uh, the webinar in two main parts. Uh, first, we are going to uh, just perform a, a quick presentation uh, with uh, several points, uh, the company that will be very fast, very quickly. Uh, then we will be talking about the requirements, why requirements are key uh, in software and system engineering. After that, we will be switching to the main topic of this webinar, why or an Excel uh, are not enough for managing my requirements. And for the second part of the webinar, we will be conducting um, a demonstration of visual requirement. Uh, at the end, uh, we will have a conclusion and we will have time for your, for your question. Once again, I remember you that you can post your question during the webinar or at the end of the webinar using the GoToMeeting interface. And at the end of the webinar, I will be answering them. So, uh, Let's start now. Um, as I just mentioned, uh, first point is just to introduce uh, Visu Solution, the company. Uh, we are uh, a company specialized in requirements engineering for both system and software engineering companies. We manufacture and distribute uh, Visu requirement, uh, our leading requirement solution. But additionally, we also work uh, with all services uh, built around requirement, consultancy, training, and so on and so on. We have the headquarters in Madrid, Spain, with office in the United Kingdom, the United States, and Germany. Additionally, as you can see here, we are ISO SPI certified and also IREP certified, a certification for the International Requirement Engineering Board. In the list of our main customer, you can see there that we have customer in several different sectors like telecommunication, automotive, uh, space, uh, finance, that come from both uh, the system and the software world. We pick uh, the best of both worlds and implement that into the tool. Let's move forward, as I mentioned, just very quickly the introduction about the company, and let's start directly with why uh, managing requirement, why it's so important to manage requirement. Um, maybe some of you are uh, familiar with this chart I am projecting right now uh, regarding the, um, the reasons of failure uh, for, for project, for software and system project. This is a study performed by the uh, Standis Group, uh, they call it the Chaos Report, and they just analyze why uh, the different projects uh, fail. Okay, they analyze uh, thousands of projects and they just uh, come up with some reason for failure. Uh, take into account that for them, uh, failing um, means that the, that the project never ends and challenge means that uh, the project finalized but not in the, in the original estimated time, budget or with the original specified functionality. Okay, so the reason for failure, as you can see here, are different reasons, but some of them are directly directed with requirement, like incomplete requirement or change in requirement. And also, the other reasons are indirectly re related with requirement, uh, for example, unrealistic ex expectations that may come because the requirements weren't clear enough, they were too ambiguous, um, we were expecting something different. So at the end, one of the, probably the, the biggest reason for failure in the projects are requirements. Uh, just another graphic in this case uh, coming from James Martin and Barry Bohem where we can see uh, the fixing cost 
of uh, of a requirement. Basically, what we are watching right now it's uh, if RA, it's find if finding uh, an error in the requirements during the requirement stage cost me one euro, one dollar, one pound. Uh, the same mistake, the same error. If I find it uh, find it uh, in the design step, it's going to cost me two times or three times more. And at the end, if, if I discover that uh, that the mistake during the operation phase of the project, it's going to cost like almost 70 times more. Okay, so it's really important to uh, invest uh, enough time working with the requirement and analyzing the possible uh, failures on the requirements. Okay, so uh, let's pretend that we have uh, uh, that I have already combined you that uh, requirements are key and we have that in mind. Requirements are really important for project success. So then it's uh, can I manage my requirement with Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel? Okay, uh, short answer, uh, no, you shouldn't. Long answer, yes, but. Okay, uh, Word and Excel are um, a great starting point when working with, with your requirement. Okay, if you are not doing any requirement uh, work at all, uh, Word and Excel can help you to start working with your requirement. But uh, as soon as you start doing more complex things with your requirement, you start tracing those requirements with tests, you start analyzing those requirements, you start working more and more with those requirements, you will find yourself that uh, uh, you will find that um, it's, uh, Word and Excel are not enough. You will be missing some things. Um, some days ago, I read uh, this great example about uh, a wedding, uh, a wedding guest list. Okay, uh, this guy, which is um, it's a requirement consultant, uh, was uh, was preparing the wedding for for his daughter, and along with his wife, he, uh, they were just uh, creating the the guest list for the wedding, and they just started using Microsoft Word for that. Okay, so they start just putting names there, putting another names, and so on and so on. And when they reach like 100 names, they realize that uh, it's really complicated to find anything in the Word document because it's just plain text, one name after another, and they don't have anything uh, to analyze, to work with there. So they just move to Microsoft Excel, and they use a column for the name, another, nas another column for the last name. But they also add some attributes, some other columns with extra info, for example, uh, uh, what kind of relative it's this person? It's a cousin, it's a grandfather, grandmother, it's a whatever. So it's easier to short uh, the different names using the, 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 the relative type and uh, find people that you are not inviting and you should be inviting. Okay? But also, for example, you can have if, uh, another column telling you if they are coming from abroad so they need to stay in a hotel, if they are uh, eating everything or they are just vegetarian or whatever. Okay, so basically uh, what I want to tell you with this example is that uh, Microsoft Word was not enough for managing uh, the wedding list. Okay, and Excel was enough. In this case, for the requirement, both Word and Excel are not enough. Okay, why Word and Excel are, are not enough for managing my requirement? I can write my requirement in Word or in Excel. I can have several columns with attributes. I can even create something like a traceability matrix in Excel. Why is not enough? Several reasons we will be uh, we will be analyzing during the during the demonstration. But probably the three main reasons are the one that uh, that I'm showing you right here. There is no real process uh, when working with Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. Okay, uh, I can modify whatever I want in the document. I can change what I what I need. Uh, any other user can come and modify my work, and I, I don't see why this has been modified, who changed that, and so on and so on. There is no real process that uh, enforces me to work in, in a specific way, beyond templates or beyond the different columns. There is also no real traceability. Tracing is just saying, okay, this requirement is coming from this person, or is being tested uh, through this test, and I put the name of the test in here. But no one is enforcing me to, to fulfill uh, that traceability field, and, and there is no way to navigate through those traces. So there is no real traces. Okay? We will be analyzing the difference between that and working with a visual requirement, which is a professional requirement. Finally, uh, there is no change management, no versioning beyond creating uh, several versions of, of the document itself. 
there is no way to have several versions of a specific requirement or to have uh, a change management over one requirement, tra tracking who has performed the change, when this change was performed, and so on and so on. Okay, so probably those are the three main reasons, but as I told you, not the only reasons. Um, another big important reason is that uh, working with different documents, different Word document, different Excel document, it's really uh, working with chaos, managing chaos. Okay, there is no integrated project data. As you can see in this in this diagram, I will have several versions of the same document working uh, with different uh, teams, uh, moving through emails and so on and so on. Okay, we have uh, a quote for uh, uh, for Garner that it's uh, really good for this for this webinar. That it's going to point us in the right direction. Um, requirements are not always best stated as text in a document or express it. It is key not only that information is captured, but also that it is easily found and navigated. Otherwise, this information will quickly be lo become lost. So, let's keep that in mind. Okay. So, what an XLR not enough. Once again, I will be pointing uh, the major difference with what an Excel during the demonstration. But let's uh, keep that in mind. It's, they are not enough. So, uh, let's move forward to a, to a professional tool to be a requirement. Okay. We here in this in this slide we can see the uh, the three key differentiator of visual requirement. Okay, uh, we are a process-oriented tool. Uh, this means that the tool is going to fit in your current company process. Probably you will already have a process for working with your requirement. Whatever is this process, you may have several level of requirements: user requirements, system requirements, subsystem requirements. That there are traits uh, between them uh, with the different subtypes: functional, non-functional, whatever. Uh, whatever process you are following, you can implement that into the tool. And you can use the tool to enforce your user to follow the process. So you don't have to adapt your process to the tool. It's just the other way around. Okay. Uh, this requirement is also a collaborative tool that is going to uh, provide a central repository for your requirements. Uh, no longer you will need to use several documents with several versions of the same document navigating through, through the email. Now you will have everything in a central database, into a central commercial database like Oracle or SQL Server, and several users accessing to the same piece of information. Additionally, those users will be uh, working with the same requirement at the same time. It's not like opening a document that you will be blocking the whole specification and no one else is going to be able to modify anything. Finally, uh, we are also really oriented to the quality of your product you are producing. Uh, enforcing the quality of your requirement is going to help you uh, to get uh, better quality products on time and on budget. So uh, let's do one thing. Let's just uh, finish with this presentation and let's move forward to the demonstration of, of the tool itself. Okay, because I think that it's going to be easier to see everything I'm just telling you uh, through through a quick, a short demo of the tool. Uh, once again, uh, remember that at the end of the um, of the of the webinar, at the end of the demo, we will have time for all your questions. So if you already have some questions, you can start posting them already using the questioning interface, or you can post them at the end of the webinar. So uh, let's close. The, the slides and let's open visual requirement. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do first of all is just uh, logging in into a project. In this case, I'm going to use the visual requirement tutorial that it's available once you install uh, the tool with uh, some modification I have performed for this uh, for this webinar. Uh, when I log in into the project, I have to specify, I have to state uh, the access rights or, or the role. I'm using uh, to work with this project. In this case, I have defined several roles that you can customize, of course, and I have created uh, one role called uh, business analyst. Okay. In the process, I have defined into the tool for this demo. Once again, I, I remember you. Um, I have to specify that the business analyst is going to be one kind of user that is uh, in charge of creating my high-level requirements. Okay. Basically, just gather 
the request for the different customers for the market and put them into the into the tool into the project so I'm logging in as a business analyst and this is my initial view as you can see I have uh, no elements right now in the in the initial view okay uh, the reason for this is because um, as this is a Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel are not enough webinar I would like to start showing you an Excel a document and a Word document containing requirement and um, show you how we can import automatically those requirements into our tool. So, for example, you are watching right now an Excel document containing several columns uh, with several uh, with several requirements. Each requirement that they have a code, a name, and then they have uh, several attributes like um, benefit, expected, origin, priority and the description of the of the requirement. So what I'm going to do right now is just uh, select this uh, this document in here, which is this one, and uh, I'm going to automatically using the import capabilities of this requirement. I'm going to import it. So the tool is uh, what it's going to do right now is just uh, uh, read. Uh, row by row and capture the different requirements that are here and then uh, we perform a mapping between those uh, the requirements with the different columns and the different fields we have defined into each requirement. So in this case we are capturing uh, each requirement with code, name, uh, description and also the fields that we have here like expected cost, benefits, origin and so on and so on. So, uh, sorry. Uh, I select to import all these elements. As you can see in the status column, the tool is telling me that all of all of these requirements are new. Uh, take into account that we are not overwriting what we already have into the project. In fact, I already have some requirements into the project, but I am not overwriting them. I am just importing this requirement from the Excel document, and the tool is comparing this requirement with the one existing into the project. If there is any change, the tool will let me know, and I can decide if I want to update the requirement information or keep the older version or whatever I want to do. In this case, I'm going to just pick all the requirements and import them into the tool. So uh, once I finish with this, I will be back to visual requirement, and I will show you how after refreshing, uh, we will uh, we will see all the Excel requirement that I have just automatically imported are now available into the tool, and we can start working with with those requirement and see the main difference when working with this requirement than working with uh, Excel. I'm going to finish, and I will leave this here to perform a future capture afterward. Okay, so back to the tool. If I click on Edit, Refresh Data. You can see now that I have got uh, a, a view that is pretty similar to the view that I have in Excel. Okay, so I have this all these columns in here. As you can see, this is the Excel, the Excel view, and this is the uh, Visual Common view. So now I have populated uh, my project. Before going forward, uh, let me show you because I have told you just a moment ago that Visual Common is a process-oriented tool. Let me show you uh, the process that we are going to follow during this webinar. Okay? For defining this process, I have created what we call a block diagram. <coughs> Sorry. Basically, this block diagram is telling me the different artifacts that I can define, that I can work with uh, into this project and the relationship between them. So, for example, in this project, I have defined that I will have user requirements as a type of element. Those user requirements can be divided into, you can see here, that we have several hierarchical relationships. So those user requirements can be divided into uh, customer requirement, marketing requirement, standard, and business rules. Okay? So uh, additionally, those uh, customer requirements can also be divided into extra requirement and work requirement. In fact, what I have done with the import is just populate the Excel, the Excel requirement box. Okay? All these boxes that you are watching right here are what we call block. Those blocks are elements of the same type, use requirements, system requirement, that 
share some common characteristics. And we can characterize them with a specific attribute. So we can define a specific attribute and a specific workflows process for each type of element. So we have got the user requirements that are managed uh, by the business analyst. That is what I have defined into this uh, project. Then those user requirements are satisfied. They are traced. They are uh, they evolve. They are being solved through the system requirements. Those system requirements can be also divided into functional and non-functional requirements. And finally, the system requirements are being validated through a uh, system test. Okay. Uh, as I told you, this is a very simple process that they have defined for this tutorial project. But of course, we can uh, we can work with a completely different process. For example, uh, we can define a more agile-oriented process, like the one you are watching right now, in which we, in which we can define uh, user stories, sprints, uh, features, epics, whatever the product backlog, the the, the sprint backlog, whatever we need. Okay. So once again. Uh, take in mind that this is just an example of, of, of what we can achieve using visual requirement. So right now what I have just done is populate the Excel requirement uh, block with the element coming from Excel. So back again to the Excel elements. I have also created uh, another view containing uh, requirements coming from doors. Uh, sorry for Word. In this case, uh, the Word requirements view is empty because I don't have any requirement imported from Word yet. So let's fix that. Let me show you. I have also prepared uh, a Word document. It's a little Word specification containing just a um, table of contents with customer requirement. And then in this chapter I have got the customer requirement. Each customer requirement contain a code, a name, a description that can contain RTF, images, whatever I need, and also an attribute called priority. So I'm going to import once again, but this time instead of importing uh, the Excel document, I'm going to import this Word document I just saw you. How we are going to perform this import? Uh, for Microsoft Excel it was pretty easy, just uh, each column is going to be a different field and each row is going to be a different requirement. How are we going to perform the import from, from Word? Well, we're going to do that based on the uh, Microsoft Word styles. As you can see here, uh, for the code, I'm using the style called child rec code. For the name, it's called child rec name. For the description, it's called child rec desk, and so on and so on. So just using those styles, I'm going to analyze the document, and the tool is going to show me that I have got those six requirements in here. And for each requirement, I got also a description and a, a, an attribute, in this case, the priority. Once again, I remember you, we are not going to overwrite what we already have into the tool, but we are going to compare that information, what could, uh, we are importing with the one into the project, and then we can decide if we want to update or, in this case, or anyway, all the elements are new, so we can just perform the import and populate uh, our block call uh, war requirements. Okay, so uh, just finishing with the import and click on finish, close. And if I go back to uh, this requirement and refresh again, now you can see that uh, the six requirements coming from uh, Microsoft Word are now stored into my project. Okay. Uh, once again, this is just an example of um, of a view. We have seen that we have got this war-like view with the navigation panel and the different uh, chapters and the different elements. We also have the Excel-like view, the one that I have shown you before. But we can configure the view as we want. So, for example, uh, we have also this user specification view that it's a Microsoft Word-like view in this case containing both attributes, priority and origin. And also, you can see that we have got that the user requirement can be divided into marketing requirement, business rules, standards, customer requirement. Basically, the classification that I showed you uh, just a moment ago into the diagram. And then for the customer requirement, I have got the Excel requirement and the Word requirement. I can just go to, uh, to any requirement. Uh, so, for example, this one in here. 
and modify whatever I need. In order to change the requirement, and this is one uh, key differentiator when working with Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel, uh, we can just um, perform what we call a checkout in order to modify the requirement. So, for example, uh, let's go to the marketing requirement, and I'm going to check this requirement out. This means that I am just uh, blocking this requirement only for me. Other user will be able to see the requirement, but they won't be able to modify the requirement. Okay, so only uh, only I am going to be able to uh, modify the requirement. So just go here and change the priority to high. Uh, and also change the description, for example, just by double-clicking. Each requirement has a little Word document attached to it, so I can just put here this, uh, or I can just change a, a style, or put here the word change, whatever. Okay, and save. Um, every time I perform this uh, checking checkout in a, uh, cycle, I'm just generating a new version of my requirement. So uh, you can see that I can go here to the version tab that contains the complete history of my requirement. And I can see that uh, I have got three versions for this specific requirement. Okay? In the previous version, uh, you can see that uh, uh, the logo for Visual is what, uh, 60 uh, and 30. And now, for this version, I have changed this to uh, 60 and 40. Okay? I can just select two different versions and compare them. Okay? So, now the tool is going to highlight the changes. For example, I have changed the priority from low to medium. I have changed the description. And specifically, what I have changed the description, I can just see that in here. Okay? So, uh, for example, I have add the word change, and I have changed uh, 30, 4, 40. Okay, so this is very important because uh, basically I'm just uh, having a, a complete history of changes. Okay, and also I can see that the user performing this change was the BA user, the business analyst. Okay, so everything is going to be recorded and everything is going to be stored uh, in the common repository with the uh, change management process. For creating a new requirement, Okay, that's as simple as clicking on this Add Item uh, icon. And for the business analyst, I have defined that he's able to create uh, customer requirements and marketing requirements. I'm going to create a new uh, marketing requirement and click on OK. And for the marketing requirement, this is the template that I have configured for creating the element. So, as you can see, we have got uh, a code that the tool is proposing for me. We have got a name, which is my default name. I'm going to say here, uh, my new requirement, for example. And we have also uh, different attributes that we can fulfill, or the tool is going to propose by default, for example, the priority. And also, I've got uh, an example description, okay, that I have defined for the marketing requirement. In this case, I'm going to just uh, leave everything as it, as it is. Um, put here, for example, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And just, uh, oh, I have just uh, imported the requirements, and the tool is going to propose uh, an order code for that. Okay. And just as simple as that, I've got this, uh, this new requirement in here. Okay. So I can now just uh, check in the requirement, meaning that I have finished working with it and it's now available for other users to work with it. Uh, another thing that I can also do with the requirement is add comment to this requirement. So for example, any user can come here and create like a little uh, a little forum attached to each requirement with the different comments. So for example, uh, this is a new requirement or no, let's do one thing. Uh, I don't understand why we are um, and turning this requirement in the specification, for example. Okay? And the, doc, uh, and the comment is going to be stored with my username and the, and the date and the version in which I created the comment. So now any other user can come here and answer to my questions or to my comments. Okay? Let's move forward. Let's continue with the process that we have defined. If you remember, we have user requirements. And now the next part will be uh, solving 
those user requirements, uh, just uh, fulfilling those user requirements through system requirement. So for that, I'm going to log out of this project and connect again. But now I'm going to use a different user. I'm going to be a system engineer, which is the role that they have defined for working with the system requirement. Okay, so now I connect as as a system engineer, and I will have a, a different set of views, a different set of access rights. Basically, uh, I need to perform different tasks, so I will have different options to do that. Okay, and I'm just uh, logging in into my into my project. So uh, this is my initial view. As you can see, it's pretty close to the one that the business analyst was using, but it contains more information. In this case. Apart from the user requirement and the four subtype of user requirement, I also have system requirements, functional, non-functional, and also system tests. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, the system engineering is allowed to work with uh, those elements. Okay, so uh, I can just uh, go to the marketing requirements and find the requirements that I have just created a moment ago. I can also uh, navigate. Uh, to other elements, for example, the system requirements, and uh, once again, I can I can modify uh, everything I want. So just by once again checking out the element, I can go here and change the description. This is change or change what I need. Uh, in this case, uh, apart from the uh, priority, I've got another attribute which is uh, the status. In the case of the status, you can see that uh, for this requirement, I am in the status review it. If I double click in here, I will be able to modify the, the current status of the requirement and switch it to on hold, reject, or approve. I'm going to change it to on hold. Now, if I am in the status on hold, I can go to ready for review again. If I go to ready for review, I can go to review it or more info needed. And finally, I'm going to uh, approve this requirement. Uh, why uh, I can change? Uh, basically, is that uh, depending on the current status, I can navigate to different other status. Why is the reason for that? Because I have defined what we call uh, a workflow attached with the status attribute. Okay, so as you can see right now, this uh, status attribute uh, we have defined the the available transition between the different values. So I can navigate from ready for review to review, then I can go to approve, reject, or hold, and so on and so forth. Uh, we can even specify which user will be allowed to perform each transition. So for example, only business analysts can uh, review a requirement, or only system engineers can approve or reject a requirement. And also, I can attach uh, a visual basic script to the transition that will be automatically executed when performing the transition. For example, if I reject a requirement, I want to send an email automatically to the author of the requirement, letting him know that this requirement has been rejected. Once again, those are things that I cannot uh, do in, in Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word. Okay, I'll at least uh, no without programming. Okay, so we can just uh, enforce the process through these uh, through these workflows. Okay. Back to the to the initial view, we can see that uh, we have specified, we have created several views. You can see the list in here uh, for this uh, for this user for this system engineer. Basically, uh, everything he needs to uh, analyze the requirement in order to create the system requirement. So, for example, uh, we have created a view containing uh, the user requirements. Okay, just like uh, the Excel document that we have seen a moment ago. But, for example, I have got another view, in this case, with the system requirements grouped by the attribute status and priority. So, for example, uh, I have got two requirements with high priority. One of them is approved, and one of them is ready for being reviewed. Okay. So, uh, I've got different views with uh, different information in order to perform the different tasks I need. Uh, one really important view here is the impact analysis view. Uh, this one is going to display, is going to show all the user requirements I've got into my project. And under each user requirement, I can see if there is any system requirement fulfilling that user requirement. 
because we have created a trace between those elements. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, you can see that we have got a lot of elements uh, not being traced. The reason for that is because I have uh, imported uh, a lot of elements from Word and from Excel, and I haven't traced them yet. Okay. So from here, we can see a lot of elements, and we can see if uh, we are fulfilling them or not, if they have any requirement under them or they don't. Okay. For example, you can see here my my new requirement I created a moment ago is not being fulfilled yet. So let's do one thing. Let's go to the initial view and let's uh, let's fix that. Let's create a system requirement in order to fulfill uh, this user requirement. If I create a new requirement now, uh, as I am a system engineer, the only type of requirement I can create are system requirements. So I click on OK. And now I'm going to get uh, another dialog letting me know uh, the element I'm going to create. So I'm going to just uh, leave the default information. Uh, just change the priority, for example, to high. Okay. And just as simple as that, I have just created a new requirement, a new system requirement that is fulfilling my uh, my user requirement. Okay. If I go back to the impact analysis view. I can see now that my uh, my new requirement is being fulfilled with my new default system requirement. Okay, we can even analyze the trace information backward instead of watching in first level the user requirement. I can see the system requirement and under each system requirement the user requirement that is the source of this of this one. Okay, I'm going to very quickly uh, close the project uh, with the system engineer and open it with the uh, business analyst again. I want to show you how the business analyst is going to be able uh, to analyze that their requirements are being fulfilled or not. For the business analyst, I have created also a traceability view in which is going to also be able to analyze how the user requirements are being fulfilled with the system requirement. But in this case, as you can see here at the bottom of my screen, we have got also a, a third column letting me know uh, the completed status, the percentage of the requirement. Okay, how we are showing that information? Okay, for the system uh, requirements, uh, that is uh, just a, a way of translating graphically uh, the status. If they are approved, they will be 100% completed. If they are on hold or they are rejected, they will be 0% zero, zero completed, and so on and so on. But what we are doing for the user requirements, because they don't have um, a status, well, for that, what we are doing is calculating their current status based on the status of all the system requirements coming from that user requirement. So, for example, if this user requirement contains uh, three system requirements uh, solving it, if all of them will be uh, would be approved, then the uh, the user comment will be 100% complete. In this case, all of them are not approved yet, so uh, the requirement is like 60% complete, something like that. Okay. So once again, this is something that we can configure all these parameters, all these numbers. We can configure it to create this dashboard and these views. Okay, once again, something that we won't be able to do uh, into Microsoft Word or Microsoft X. I'm going to close again and continue working with the uh, system engineering user. Just uh, give me one second to log in again into my project. And let's keep working. So, you have seen that we can create a traceability view with the traceability information. But that's not the only way for uh, analyze, uh, analyzing sorry, the traces. Okay? We can even analyze them in a more graphical way using a traceability matrix. So for example, I have got here uh, a trace between user requirement and system requirement. So what I'm going to do is just enter into this trace and automatically create a matrix that is going to display in the different rows the user requirement into the different columns, the system requirement, and then I will be able to see if they are traced or not. Okay, I can even apply um, I can even apply different filters to this. Uh, to this, for example, I I want to see 
only those user requirements that I am not fulfilling. Okay? So, what I'm watching right now is that, uh, sorry, the other way around. I want to see the user requirement non-related. So, what I'm, got, what I'm watching right now is those user requirements not fulfilled yet. But I can also do the other way around. I have just done that a moment ago. I want to see those system requirements that are not traced with a user requirement. In this case, there is only one of them. But what this means is that I don't know where this, use, this system requirement is coming from, but no user has asked for that. Okay? So we can use all those matrix to analyze uh, this information. We can even create new traces uh, through the matrix. Okay? Uh, one more thing that uh, you are watching right now is that uh, we have got different relationships in the matrix. Some of them are marked in, in red and some of them are marked in blue. What's, what's the meaning of that? Okay. The trace marked in red are what we call uh, suspect relationships. Okay. Uh, once we activate the suspect relationship management into the tool, uh, every time we perform a change into an element, the tool is going to automatically uh, turn all the traces that involve that element into suspects. Uh, what's the meaning of that? Okay, let's, uh, let's figure out that uh, we are just uh, modifying a user requirement that it's already traced with system requirements. Uh, by changing that user requirement, I will probably will need to check changes for the system requirement. So that is what the tool is telling me. Okay, you have changed this element. Now analyze that the element traced with that won't be impacted by that trace, by that change. Okay, so once again, this is something that it's uh, uh, centuries uh, far from, uh, from working with uh, Excel or working with Word. We don't have real traceability that, that we can analyze, that we can explode like the one we are analyzing in here. Okay, so another uh, big difference when working with uh, Excel and Word. Uh, back again to my initial view. I also wanted uh, to show you uh, in this project I have created a, a third level of elements that are uh, the system tests. Okay, I'm not going to enter into analyzing those elements, but just take into account that we have got the complete trace between user requirements, system requirements, and system tests. Okay, we will be using that afterward. Um, once uh, I am working with these elements in my different views, something that I can also do is just, uh, for example, uh, if I create uh, a user requirements uh, view, like the one in here, this is a more like, like an Excel document. So what I can do is just, uh, I'm going to close this one, what I can do is just select this view I'm watching and export the view automatically to Microsoft Excel. So as you can see, I am, I am creating uh, automatically an Excel document containing all the requirements that I'm watching with all the columns that I was showing. For example, if I just uh, remove this column in here, or remove this one, or remove this one, and now I export, now only the origin is going to be exported. If I apply any filter, uh, display only the elements created by me, only those in status accepted, only those whatever, that will apply to the export. So it's basically uh, what you see is what you get export. Okay? So I can just very fast, very quickly generate uh, an Excel document. And the same goes for, for Word. If I am in a, in a Word-like view, like this one in here, I can select, for example, the system requirements and say, okay, I want to export my, my system requirements. Okay? So just uh, go to uh, export to Microsoft Word and select a template in order to have a, a more or less beautiful document with the styles and so on. Okay? And automatically, once again, we are importing this information to Microsoft Word. We have got this front page, we have got the table of contents that I need to update, and we have got uh, three chapters, system requirements, functional and non-functional. And then we have all the information that we were displaying, we were watching in the view, but now into Microsoft Word. And uh, the, the funny thing here, or, or the important thing here, is that uh, these views that I can export to Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel, 
I can also uh, import them back. I, to, uh, I have just shown you at the beginning of the demonstration that I can perform uh, an import of a Word document or an Excel document. So I can just uh, export to Word or to Excel, modify something, for example, in a meeting or if I'm traveling or whatever, and then uh, import them back and analyze the changes. Just decide what I want to move to the to the central repository or what I want to uh, just uh, discard. Okay, so we can just complete cycle of export and, and import from Microsoft Word and Microsoft X. Okay. Uh, finally, there is also uh, another mechanism for uh, generating documents. Okay. In fact, uh, what I have just shown you for Word and Excel is just the direct export. I apply a filter, I select the columns, and I just perform the export. But we can even uh, create more complex reports using the Report Manager. Okay, uh, this report manager allow me to create uh, this uh, this report, these documents that may contain uh, further information, not just uh, a plain view exported to Word or to Excel, but I can also add metrics, calculations, dashboard, whatever I need into the into the report. Okay, so for example, right now I have just created a, a simple report uh, containing just a list of requirements with the code and the name and the description. Okay? And just as simple as that, I created this report with code name description for each element. Okay? It's just uh, uh, one of the predefined reports. But I have also created in, for this specific project a report uh, by myself uh, containing um, the test coverage of this, uh, of this project. As I told you at the beginning of the webinar, we have got a user requirement, uh, trace with system requirement and those system requirements are being traded with system test. Okay, so I have created a complete traceability reporting here. You can see in the first level the user requirement. In the second level you can see uh, the system requirement and under the system requirement, if any, you can see the system test associated to that um, system requirement marked in yellow. And at the end of the of the document, uh, in the in the right part of the document, you can see uh, an status associated with the test. Okay, that is uh, an attribute that we have into visual requirement, telling me the status of the test. The test is passed or is failed. Okay. Uh, so far, that information is being is being gathered from visual requirement. But after that, uh, the report itself is if, is uh, applying some some calculations. Okay, so basically, if all the tests associated with uh, uh, with a um, with a system requirement are in the status pass, then the 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 system requirement will be passed. If at least one of the tests is fail, then the system requirement will be failed. The same calculation goes for the user requirement. If all the user requirements are fulfilled, are, are passed, then it will be passed. And at the end of the document, you can see that in the right uh, part of the screen at the bottom, uh, we have got um, we have got a, a bar chart containing the number of passed user requirement and failed user requirement. Okay, so this is just uh, another example of uh, of a Word document. Sorry, of a uh, of an export. Of, uh, of this requirement. Okay, uh, so this was uh, more or less what I wanted to show you uh, about uh, this requirement. Take into account that there is much more into the tool, okay, and take into account please that we can configure everything, the different attributes I have shown you, the different type of elements, the different traces. All that has been configured by me for this specific project but all that information can be configured following the current process. So, uh, back to the presentations. Back to our slide. Uh, here we go. You can see, uh, oh, sorry, uh, we are here. There we go. Uh, let's move to the conclusion. So, what we have seen right now is that there are a lot of difference between working with a Word document and working with a, or Excel document and working with a requirement management tool. Okay, but just to summarize, 
let me just uh, remember you those uh, those difference okay so uh, oops sorry there we go first of all we are lacking a repeatable process okay we don't have a real process in Word or in Excel beyond a template okay into one of these tools, into Visual Requirement, we will be following the process. The user will be following our process, the, the one that we have defined. Uh, when working with Visual Requirement, we have got a central uh, requirement repository to maintain only one version of the truth. Okay, We don't have several documents with several versions running through the different emails and so on. We have just a central repository. Uh, we also have real traceability that we can use and that we can uh, navigate through. Okay, we can go from the system requirement to the user requirement, uh, to the user asking for that, to the test testing that, whatever. And we can navigate that traces. It's not just a uh, text telling me this is traced with this. Okay. Um, we are also uh, we also have the capability for reusing requirements across different projects. We haven't seen that into the into the webinar because there is only one hour for everything but uh, there is also the capability into Visual Requirement to uh, just uh, select a set of elements and publish them into different projects so we can reuse them and this is much more complete just copy paste because we can keep a reference to the original elements and then if someone modify whatever we can propagate the change to all the projects with the notification of those changes. Okay, uh, basically for creating product families, for creating, uh, for reusing standards or laws, requirements that I need to publish to several uh, projects, this is really helpful. We also have a change management version control over each specific element and also over the whole specification. Okay, uh, we also have concurrent access and multiple users working over the same set of elements. This is not like a Word document or an Excel document. Uh, one user comes, open the document, and this is it. Okay, no one may modify anything else until the first one finished. Here, I can change an element, and the guy sitting next to me can be changing another element. Okay, as long as we are not modifying specifically the same element, there is no problem at all. And even in that case, I will be blocking the element, but the other user will be reading it. Finally, we don't have project management capabilities like metrics, reporting, dashboard, and so on. Okay. Additionally, regarding the difference from the business point of view, uh, investing in our requirements tool will allow me to uh, reduce the cost of my projects. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend probably more time uh, working with the requirements, but this time working with the requirement and this time I spend doing right things with the requirement is going to save a lot of time in the later stages of the of the project because I uh, will be just uh, skipping uh, errors when gathering the specification, errors when building whatever the customer was asking. So at the end I'm going to save a lot of money with this uh, with this time working with the requirement. In the same way, we are red reduction uh, reducing the time to market of the products because we will be finishing earlier. We will be spending more time with the with the requirement probably, but uh, thanks to that time, there will be less delays when working with the with the project. The quality of what I am going to implement is going to be uh, higher. Because I'm going to understand, I'm going to better understand what the customer was asking for, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be easy to uh, to implement that. And finally, of course, I'm going to increase the level of customer satisfaction. And uh, this uh, this was what I was uh, wanted uh, what I wanted to to tell you about uh, about this webinar and also about the tool. Uh, we are going to move forward now to the uh, to the um, to the questions. Okay, so uh, for that, what I'm going to do is just uh, stop the recording right now in order to afterward uh, upload this this video. If you can, uh, so you can watch it once again.